We're rather confused about what the hell went on last night. Uh, out of the blue, the far-right riots that we were promised turned out to be anti-racism rallies. That came from nowhere. Very odd. Uh, but uh, it was great because love triumphed over hate. Uh, let's have a look at it, an example of love triumphing over hate. Uh, take it away, guy with a loud hailer. We've got children and women using those trains. It's doing the some relatives. They are disgusting, nasty factors. And we need to cull their throats and get rid of them all. Uh, that's Councillor Ricky Jones. He's a Labour councillor uh, and uh, he is now uh, suspended by the Labour Party and he's been arrested for encouraging murder. Uh, but uh, I guess my first question to you, Rakib, is that these anti-racism rallies, uh, there were a lot of kind of you know, refugees welcome signs and mm. things like that, but largely many of them seem to be free Palestine gatherings in disguise. You heard it there. Uh, what did you make of what happened last night? Well, firstly, Kevin, as you know, when you talk about the wider anti-fascist movement, that that in its that, that movement itself contains various factions, and there is an overlap between the anti-fascist movement, but also the pro-Palestine movement as well. So it doesn't necessarily surprise me that there were different kinds of activists within those what you could call counter demonstrations. But what was really interesting for me is that we received news that there would be in the region of 30 far-right protests. Uh, this then rose to 100. That's right. Far-right protests. Mm. And then it turned out that there wasn't hardly any far-right protesters in these locations. Now, there, there, were, there was a list of locations which is being circulated on platforms such as Telegram. That, that, that has been reported. Um, many of those locations were um, legal firms that specialise in immigration and asylum cases, and also hotels uh, which may well be hosting um, migrants. Uh, so uh, I think what's really interesting here is who produced that, who, who produced those uh, messages on platforms um, such as Telegram and who is responsible for circulating that. Because something here has, has gone wrong in terms of the intelligence that's been reported to the media and then relayed to the rest of the population. Now, I can tell you now personally, Kevin, that there are many ethnic minority families who are actually very worried about the fact that there could be up to 100 far-right protests mm. uh, taking place. Now, of course, they were pleased that that didn't materialise. But I think the key point here is that the information that was provo being provided to much of the British public by mainstream media didn't seem to be particularly accurate. Yeah, I was just, uh, I, I was just discussing this... Uh, sorry to interrupt, Rekhi, but I was just discussing this with uh, Isabel Oakshot. Now, uh, you know, call me a cynical old journalist, but I, I uh, felt that something was being choreographed here. Mm. You can't have these pretty sizable anti-racism rallies just cropping up at cities all over the country. Pretty huge display uh, uh, from nowhere. We were told by the authorities, watch out. And we had shopkeepers boarding up their shops, mm. people, as you say, locking themselves in their houses because the far-right thugs are coming. No such thing happened. Now, if you're promised 100 uh, far-right riots, uh, it, it's inconceivable that you don't get a sign of them anywhere. So my suspicion is they were never going to happen, that somehow or other, someone somewhere wanted to sort of show us, no, no, no far-right riots, look at this, spontaneous, all these people, love triumphing over hate. And by the way, isn't this handy for the government? Turns out that the population in this country have got no problem with immigration, no problem with the uh, migrant crisis. Look, look, they've all got posters saying, uh, refugees welcome. Police then going, oh, look, look at us, we've just raided all these far-right thugs' houses. Apparently it was 20, so big deal, you know. Uh, 
Uh, very strange, very strange. And if it was the authorities that put mm. out this fake news, if it was something to do with the government or the police, this is very serious because people have a right to know what is going to happen in their cities. Uh, you talked of Muslim people. They have a right to know whether they should be whether they should be terrified or not. If we're being fed misinformation by the authorities, uh, uh, we may have crossed some kind of Rubicon. Well, I, I mean, firstly, I, I think it's best that we stick to what we definitely know. What we definitely know was that there was widespread reporting that there would be up to 100 far-right protests, mm. and those protests did not take place. Now, of course, we now have this narrative that we had anti-fascist, anti-racist uh, counter-demonstrations, which, which essentially snuffed out these um, far-right protests. Mm. Uh, and, and by the way, I, I think that if the government, the or the Labour, the Labour Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer, it, or the government in general, if they want to use last night's events to say, well, actually, we are a country which is generally at ease with the current levels of immigration, we are perfectly fine. The mainstream is perfectly fine with how the current asylum system functions. Uh, then that would be a huge mistake in my view, from a political perspective, it really would be. Now, I think in terms of talking about the far-right disorders more generally, Kevin, which you've seen in England, but also in Belfast, uh, Northern Ireland, where the, the, the Northern Ireland, the police service in Northern Ireland really struggling there, fundamentally under-resourced, to the point that they're entertaining, benefiting from mutual aid from Police Scotland, up to 120 police officers may be sent from Scotland to Northern Ireland to help out. Uh, the, the key point here is that, that there's no doubt there is an anti-immigration element to mm. the rioting. There's no two ways about uh, that. Agreed, agreed. Yeah, and, and, and also make the point that uh, during the rioting, we've seen two hotels associated with hosting asylum seekers um, being attacked, one in Tamworth in Staffordshire, the other one being in Rotherham and mm. South Yorkshire. But I do also think we have to talk about, Kevin, we have to guard against over-rationalising the riots. I do think that some of the people who participate in these violent disorders, they're actually just not very ideological. Yeah. They're not very polit politically motivated. I think that we'll probably have... The, there'll be people there who are just ranked troublemakers. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprised... That. It wouldn't surprise me if they just have a criminal record. I think we also have to talk about the, the reality of this being quite alcohol fueled, drugs fueled uh, violence mm. as well. So I think almost that sort of that overlap between the sort of football hooliganism subculture, which doesn't exist nowhere to the extent of the 80s, but there's still remnants of it. Yeah. How much is that overlapping with the violent disorder? But mm. I think that really key thing is that we have a mature conversation about why the riots took place and be realistic about the degree to which they were ideologically motivated. Uh, we're going to go to break now, Raki, but uh, I want to talk about uh, the danger that what we saw last night will be seized upon by the government conveniently, rather too conveniently in my mind, to say that disquiet over the migrant crisis, over the levels of immigration, uh, is clearly not a thing. In other words, uh, will they use what happened last night to try and kill off the debate that this nation very seriously needs to have. Uh, as I say, uh, Keir Starmer refuses to discuss what's going on in any other terms except in terms of law and order. We must arrest these thugs and we must throw them in jail. Yes, but why are they protesting? He then says, these are not protests. These are cr crimes. Well, yeah, but they are protests. You might not like the form, but they are protests. And a lot of people feel the same as those rioters. And uh, I'm worried that an important debate that this nation needs to have is being killed off, is being deliberately suppressed by this government.